This physcast will look at an AC circuit containing a resistor and a capacitor in series. Pause the video and read through the question carefully. Now that you've read through the question, you should understand the nature of the circuit and in this particular question, what is being asked. In this case, it's a frequency that we're trying to calculate, the frequency at which the voltage across the capacitor has a particular value in this case half of the applied voltage. We can begin by interpreting the question. As already mentioned it's the voltage across the capacitor that's of interest and it's the frequency where that particular voltage relationship will occur. So in an AC circuit, which will behave differently to a DC circuit in this instance, it's a combination of resistance, because we have a resistor there, and reactance. So how does the capacitor affect the circuit when it's being driven with a time varying voltage? And this will involve an understanding of the combination of those two in the form of impedance. So moving on to our develop stage, we might uh, make sure we understand what values we have in our problem. So let's just annotate our diagram here that's already supplied for us. And we might like to recall that it's the voltage across the capacitor that's forming part of our problem here. At the moment we're not particularly interested in the voltage across the resistor. So we might want to remind ourselves that the voltage across the capacitor here will depend upon some properties of our circuit. It will depend upon the current that's flowing through our circuit and it will depend upon the capacitive reactance. And that dependence is an AC form of Ohm's law, which is that the voltage across the capacitor will equal the current multiplied by that capacitive reactance. And we'll recall that that capacitive reactance is not a constant quantity, it's a quantity that depends upon the value of the capacitor and the angular frequency, omega, at which that capacitor is being uh, driven by some external voltage source. So clearly that frequency, that angular frequency omega there, is going to be of interest to us uh, to find out what that will be. Now that's all well and good, we know what the voltage across the capacitor depends upon, but importantly this current here, that's going to be important, it also depends upon some properties of our circuit. It depends upon the applied voltage, in this case we'll characterize that by its peak value, V0, as given by the question and the response of the circuit to that applied voltage, which is not just the resistance, uh, it's also the impedance Z. And that relationship is again that this um, applied voltage here will equal the current multiplied by the impedance of the circuit Z. And in these equations here, I've kind of assumed, as I've written them, that I'm going to be dealing here with peak quantities. So this voltage across the capacitor, I've written here as a essentially as a peak voltage. It will be the peak current multiplied by the capacitive reactance, where the applied voltage to the circuit, now that peak voltage V0, will give a peak current I multiplied by the impedance of the circuit. Of course, we need to remember what impedance depends upon. It depends upon the combination of resistances and reactances. In this case we only have capacitive reactants and we've got to square them, add them and take the square root. That's how we find an impedance. It would be a little more complicated if our circuit also included um, some inductance, in which case we'd have to remember how we include the inductance, but in this case it's just a resistor and a capacitor. Uh, of course this reactive capacitance we know depends upon uh, the frequency of the applied voltage. Now in this question, just to finish off our development stage here, um, importantly these relationships um, we need to think about how they relate when we have uh, this voltage across the capacitor equal to half of the applied voltage V0. So we can move now to our evaluation step where we try to find out what these will be. And as is almost always the case in, in problems of this nature, um, we actually want to try to do this as far as we can without putting too many numbers in. We want to keep this as general as possible, that will allow us to kind of understand what's happening in the problem and probably lead to less confusion in our calculations at the end when we're not uh, kind of put in a whole bunch of intermediate calculations. 
So we want this uh, relationship here, and we can just write down what we know. We know that the voltage across the capacitor will be the current multiplied by the reactive um, component of the capacitive reactance, which we know is just 1 over omega times C. And then we want that to equal half of the applied voltage. And the applied voltage we can write in terms of the current multiplied by the impedance, which we can write as square root of R squared. And here I can write this as 1 over omega squared C squared. And we can see straight away that this is quite a nice way to, to begin the problem in that we actually don't need to, in this instance, calculate what that current will be. The current's the same on both sides of this particular equation, so it factors out. We should be able to now rearrange this expression here, perhaps uh, the idea of cross-multiplying. So I will have omega c uh, into the square root r squared plus 1 over omega squared c squared. And that will equal, that was equal 2. And really what I'm trying to solve here uh, is for omega. So let's just square both sides of that equation and I'll get omega squared c squared uh, into r squared plus 1 over omega squared c squared because I've squared to get rid of that square root and I square the right hand side. This gives me 4. Uh, I can rearrange this equation reasonably easily now to give me all I can expand out that bracket. Uh, omega squared r squared c squared plus 1 will equal 4, or rearranging that one last step here, I find that omega here will equal, I'll end up with 3 on the top line there, my 4 minus that 1, um, over uh, c, that would be omega squared, that uh, would be r squared c squared, so if I take the square root of both sides I'll get a root 3 on the top and it's an rc on the bottom. I can just put some values in here now, this is root 3, over my resistor was 660 ohms. Multiply by my capacitor, which was 10 microfarads. And when I do that calculation, I end up with a number there of 262. Now that's uh, my angular frequency, so that will actually be in radians per second. Or sometimes I can just write that in inverse seconds. The question really asked me for a frequency, so I probably shouldn't just stop at an angular frequency. I remember that my frequency is angular frequency divided by 2 pi. So if I do that calculation there, 262 divided by 2 pi. I get a number here that's to two significant figures, 42 hertz. So at a frequency of 42 hertz in this particular circuit, I will have the voltage across the capacitor, the peak voltage across the capacitor, equal to half the applied voltage, whatever that applied voltage might be. We can do an assess step here, and we should do that just to make sure that our uh, solution here is in fact consistent and makes sense. Um, we can check the units. A nice easy way to, to establish the units here uh, is to notice that hopefully you recall RC, the resistance times the capacitance, is actually the time constant for this particular combination of components in the circuit. In a DC example that would tell us something about the time in which it took to charge or discharge um, our capacitor, that time constant. So this RC must have units um, of time. And if you look over here in our solution, we've got a frequency or an angular frequency that is some number, that number has no dimensions, it's just a number, remember it came from the half uh, over here in our, in our initial relationship, divided by RC. So this must have units of 1 over time, which indeed is the unit that we expect for a frequency or an angular frequency. So that's a quick check we can do there, understanding the time constant for an RC circuit. Um, let's just do a, another quick check on the behavior of this circuit. In other words, what does it look like as we were to vary things? What if we wanted to have um, the voltage across the capacitor to increase? We wanted a larger voltage across the capacitor, more than half of the applied voltage. And if you look into our uh, equations here, here's where the half came in. That's where we wanted our voltage across the capacitor to be a half the applied. If that was a larger number, it can't be larger than one, we can't have more than the applied voltage, but say you know, it was three quarters or seven eighths or something, um, then this number here, this, this two, would become a smaller number. Hopefully you can see that. So the larger this fraction is out here, the smaller this number here would be. And where does this number end up? This number ends up, if you see, basically here, where we squared it and subtracted one. So this number at the top here, it's telling us something about uh, 
uh, how much voltage we have across the capacitor. The more voltage we have across the capacitor, the smaller this number in this part of the solution here, the smaller this number here will be. The smaller this number is for a given value of R and C, the smaller the frequency. So it's telling us that if we wanted more voltage across the capacitor, then in fact our frequency or our angular frequency, either of those, would have to go down. And that's our understanding when we look at the uh, voltage across the capacitor in an RC circuit. It actually acts like a so-called low-pass filter. That is, we get a larger voltage across the capacitor for lower frequencies. And that's indeed what our solution was indicating. So it seems to be consistent with what we expect.